Thank you. Uh, and thank you uh, very much, Olympia, who brought me here. Um, I think it's interesting. You realized I found things to disagree, and this means it's interesting for me, even if it's probably the, far, uh, the, the, the longest trip I did from my uh, home to conference. But thank you. And uh, I think you didn't make too much mistake, because I was trying to put the whole title in my talk. Uh, identity is definitely there. Indistinguishability is there. Uh, of course, it's about quantum mechanics. Uh, there is only one thing missing. I don't have none. I have <laughs> locality. I don't believe in non-locality. Uh, there is some kind of, but anyway. But I think it's close enough to the uh, theme of the conference. If only none is missing, I think it's OK. Olympia, what do you agree? Um, what I want to do is uh, to prove a Born rule. It's usually a Born rule is a postulate. I'm not supposed to prove it, but there are so many proofs of Born rule, and especially uh, lately in uh, the framework of uh, many word interpretation. And uh, I do want to do essentially the same. I don't know how much overlap there is with other proofs. I, I believe some other proofs are incorrect. But uh, maybe this is not surprising. Uh, um, uh, but uh, I believe this, my proof and other proofs are very much the same for standard quantum mechanics. So really, the main part, it will be the proof uh, of Born rule in standard quantum mechanics. I put uh, maybe some apostrophes about proof because I don't believe it, it's still a postulate. We cannot just prove it from nothing. We have to put some assumptions. We have to add something to a quantum formalism to get, uh, uh, to go, to get a Born rule. So I want to make clear what assumption I make both in the framework of standard quantum mechanics and um, in the framework of many word interpretation. First, I assume quantum formalism, which I think everybody can accept. Second, for me, quantum formalism, it's maybe something particular one. For me, it's wave function ontology. For me, quantum mechanics is about wave function. And um, I accept what von Neumann uh, told us. So we have this wave function. It's, if we talk about collapse, standard quantum mechanics for me, it's a Schrodinger equation plus this second process during measurement. And von Neumann did a good job showing that it's not very important when exactly the measurement happened, although he never said where it, when it, where it happened. And maybe it's problematic if we consider it as a theory, we should say when it happened. But at least he showed, for practical purposes, it doesn't matter. I will use uh, symmetry. Symmetry. For me, I don't know, people was, might say it's additional assumption. For me, it's kind of a basic, I don't know, philosophical or scientific. Symmetry, we can rely on symmetry. Any, when I teach, <coughs> uh, teach maybe uh, classical electrodynamics, symmetry is given. We can use it. There is no question. Of course, maybe uh, God, nature, created our universe as symmetric, then we might have problems. Will you explain later symmetry with respect to what? Um, there will be examples, so uh, I, I will try to be kind of concrete, so you will, I think it will be clear what, what I mean by symmetry. And uh, to get Born rule in standard quantum mechanics, I need something else. And what I need, uh, it's uh, relativistic causality, no signaling, which is really outside. It's not part of uh, non-relativistic quantum mechanics because it really doesn't have it. Uh, but uh, if I want quantum mechanics to be co consistent with relativistic uh, with no signaling, I believe I can get Born rule. In many words, it will be 
very similar proof, but some, there is no this relativistic causality uh, postulate because it's built in. Many words talk about Schenger equation, or instead of Schenger equation, it's uh, relativistic generalization. It's relativistic, so by definition, there is no signaling. So we don't need this last one, but still, we need to work, because in many words, there are problems with probability. So what I will do, I will do this proof. I also will talk about the problems of standard quantum mechanics, which kind of a little, which leads me, I think, leads should lead everyone to many words. And then uh, I will talk about problem of probability in, uh, in many words. Uh, so this is just uh, what I will do in, uh, many words, in the framework of many words. The same assumption, quantum formalism, wave function ontology, uh, without collapse, uh, symmetry as before. But now I will need local supervenience of experience of an observer. I, instead of there's no signaling. I have to talk about who is observer. The observer might be somebody who is local. And uh, I have this connection because it's not what basically many words tell us. Quantum mechanics is correct without collapse, period. But this might not be enough to explain our experience because uh, the formalism doesn't look like what we see around. So we need to add something which I'm not, I don't know if it's physics or it's not physics, but it's part of the many world interpretation. We need connection to our experience. So this other part and this connection uh, tell us that observers are local and there is a, the supervenience is, is there because what many words says, there is nothing but the wave function. This is a whole ontology. But still we have experience. We have to find this experience inside this wave function and how we find it, how we connect it, so it's, it's addition to a theory. Okay. Standard quantum mechanics, my textbook quantum mechanics. Um, it looks like many words, but with one branch. We have Schrodinger equation or it's or something instead. And we have collapses at measurement. They collapse to word, to wave function which corresponds in our, in our case, our world. Uh, it also has Born, Born rule, and now I will try to show that the Born rule must be there if we want consistency with, relativity, uh, with relativity. This peaceful coexistence which people admit follow because we have a Born rule. If instead of Born rule we have something different, there will be no peaceful coexistence. So now I want to prove it. I start with kind of very simple universe. This simple universe has one particle in this symmetric state. This is really the wave function. It has part here, part here, and part here. It's symmetric. You know, you see it's symmetric. You rotate by 120 degrees. You see exactly the same story. You cannot distinguish. So this is my symmetry. Here it's my special symmetry. You have some manipulation, move, any rotation, uh, a rotation by 120 degrees, give us that one situation equal to another one. Now, I want to make some experiment. If I have only one particle, no experiment can be done. So I add an observer. Now, this is, I'm on the level of Gedanken experiment. I can build or think about three identical observers, absolutely identical observers. We know all elect electrons are the same, and observers are just particular wave function. I can arrange the same wave function, three, the same wave function, and I will put them with the same 102 degrees uh, rotation symmetry. So I have particles in a superposition, particle in superposition, only one particle, and three observers, but the identical one, exactly identical one, no, nothing distinguishing. Uh, between them. The same wave function, exactly. Now, they decide in particular time to make a measurement. I, do they have the particle near them or not? Projection, projection on a uh, uh, operator measuring the existence of particle near them. 
exactly the same tools they will use, exactly the same time, all, everything will be exactly the same. So standard quantum mechanics tell us uh, the, the previous situation is allowed. We have a macroscopic object well localized in a definite position. We have microscopic object in a superposition. But after measurement, uh, we must have one outcome. So after measurement, we might have this. And even there is a symmetry, probabilistic theory, even with the symmetry, break symmetry on outcome. This is the meaning of probabilistic theory. Probabilistic theory doesn't, is not really kind of completely symmetric. There is this symmetry breaking when we make measurement. This is what's mean probability. But it's still symmetric if the probability are equal. So symmetry is there, but theory is probabilistic. So we don't know, maybe it's here or maybe it's here. Now, I have to tell that this picture is really problematic, which uh, uh, I think during, now I, there are not too many talks, but I'm already confused, uh, uh, who discussed this, uh, because this situation and uh, this situation, they are really the same situation. If I have the symmetry, then we cannot, there is no difference. We have completely symmetric situation before, now it's not symmetric situation, but this not symmetric situation is equal to this non-symmetric situation. So one cannot really say that there are different outcomes. So it's very hard with my Gedanken experiment to discuss probability of Z of Z because it's the same Z. So really I need to add something asymmetric. I will put some symbols. This is place A, this is place B, this is place C. I break the symmetry. But I think we always in physics say there are some all kind of processes. Some are relevant, some are not relevant. Otherwise we cannot do physics. So we should allow uh, some things which are not relevant. It's A, B, C not relevant to the story. They're not, they're, there, are process, there are some things in physics which we add and they're not relevant to our experiment. So this in, uh, we will write that this is place A, place B, place C in a sense, which is not relevant. So we still can use our symmet symmetry argument about outcomes, but now we can uh, use some uh, for formula we can write. This is uh, the, the particle state was A plus B plus C. There is a meaning for A, B, and C before we even couldn't do this. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, so apart from all the symmetric stories, there is this asymmetric story which we believe not relevant to the experiment, but which defines different location. And um, then we can write the quantum state, it's A, B, and C, and um, there are this quantum state of this well-defined states of these observers. And, um, when we make this measurement in particular time, since A, B, and C, uh, we decided, we can postulate it's not relevant. Now we have symmetry about experiment. We know that if uh, it's in A, it's not in B and C. If it's in B, it's not in A and C. So the sum of the probability should be one. Probability to find it in A has to be one third. Now, this follows from symmetry. I don't use any any assumption, anything from symmetry, I know that in this kind of situation, I have uh, that probability to find the particle in A, it's one third. What happened with uh, states that are not symmetric? I mean, you have. I will come. Ah, okay, it's coming. Of course, of course. Ah, okay. Till now, what I found, it's a probability rule for symmetric cases which uh, we had this some, uh, some in, uh, who somebody suggested they are not exist in nature. So then maybe then it's not relevant. I, I, believe, I don't see any reason why would not, they would not exist in nature. So I use them. 
if I would, somebody would pro prohibit me to use symmetric cases, I don't have a proof. But I see no reason why one why pro will prohibit me to, have, to consider symmetric cases. But till now, I didn't prove yet Born rule. I can, uh, I can mention that Born rule tells me in this case the same. Because uh, the amplitude of in uh, A, it's one over square root of three. Probability is one third. Exactly like in Born rule. But I need to prove it that it's universal. How I, how I do it? So we have this symmetric situation. And uh, now we allow all kinds of manipulation. We know that if in this situation we'll make measurement, probability to find the particle in A is one third. And we have this amplitude, one over square root of three uh, in A. This is what, uh, this is the part correspond here. So A is being here, and the, the amplitude is one over square root of three. But here we have a symmetry, so we have other arguments why it should be one third, because of symmetry. But now we can do the following. We can take a beam splitter, we can uh, send these two particles to interfere constructively, and now we have only two wave packets, not three wave packets. And this three, um, the equation for them, it will be one square root of three of A plus two square root of two over three D. No symmetry anymore. Maybe some people will say kind of symmetry one and two, maybe half. But also, it's not exactly symmetric. Amplitudes are different, so I, this assumption for me, it's naive and very strange, although many people trying to do this. So this operation I can do um, before the signal about this operation will come to A. So if I do this operation, probability in A changes, I can send signals. Maybe not on one, but I can make many copies like this, and then if many copies like this change probability, we see it. Again, some say probability will never say infinite, infinite, but for all practical purposes, this is what physicists say. If a change, changing probability is something, is a signal. We are not supposed to change probability by any action far away. So this is action far away, which and it does not, is not supposed to change probability. So probability in A is supposed to be the same with this action or without this action. It should be, it still should be one of us, one third. <coughs> so any state, if we have this one square root of three, A, and something else, if there's something else, we can move to symmetric state, like here. We can, this state can be moved to symmetric state before the signal will come. In a symmetric state, we know it's one over three. We know that because of uh, no signaling principle, it should be the same in the other state. So this essentially tells us that the proof. Every time we have a scalar product between state and particular things which we want to measure, local thing, A, one over square root of three, then the probability is one third. This is a crucial thing. There are more steps, if, but something not clear, I will be happy if, to hear questions. Yes. I don't see the connection with the derivation of the Born rule. Maybe you haven't done this yet, but. Uh, so, what I, till now, it's not the full Born rule. What I claim okay. is that if I have a quantum state here, which uh, has one square root of three of A, and uh, so I tell whatever it is far away, the probability here should be one third. Why? Why? Because I can make this far away to symmetric case, and from symmetric case I know it's one third. So I prove that if square root of one third, at least for this special kind of, special case. Okay. Yeah, 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 I will come to later. To, okay. I can. If you start with a big one and then split it into the two little guys. Yes, and now they're symmetric. But 
I just don't, why don't you say one half? Um, why would not say, because one half it was no symmetry. Because I couldn't say, oh, okay. the, the situation before, I couldn't say that this state, I think it's like this. Yeah. This state is not symmetric, as so you, you see. So don't get to infer anything about probability. Yeah, I cannot, That's I cannot, okay. from symmetry I cannot say anything. For this one, uh, I can. And since I can uh, change from this one to this one without sending signals, okay. I can say that this should be correct too. Okay, okay so I have, uh, case one third, um, now I want to generalize it to any. Um, so, and maybe just repeat assumption. Probability depends on the wave function, there aren't any other things. I have wave function ontology, there is nothing but the wave function. So it cannot depend on anything else because there is no anything else. And uh, there is no superluminal signaling, which physicists kind of very, like this very much, I'm a physicist, I, I, would, I would not like theory in which you can make this. I, till now, no one showed superluminal signaling. I, re, I rejected many papers from quant pH claiming that you can use collapse for signaling or anything else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what? <laughs> And now I want to go from one over three to one over, uh, to, uh, to one over square root of n. So uh, first I just can draw this picture and this almost good because uh, I say now it's, it's very similar. Although it's not as robust as before. The, the case with one over three was clean because now I cannot really take everything just but one and move in time to, to one to another place uh, what I can do, I can do only part. This, this half I can move before the signal will come there. So at least I can, I can show that in this situation or in this situation, the probability is the same. In both situations we have this one square root of n in A. In A, here we have this one square root of n A. This is my A state. And I can play, I can change this one and this one and this one. So maybe not as robust, but the same argument essentially, I think it's pretty convincing that the same argument tells me that even in, uh, when I have this situation, because I can make symmetric case with n, in symmetric case I know from symmetry it's one over n, therefore uh, if I have, uh, uh, if I have this uh, amplitude var over square root of n, it should be probability one over n. Maybe not as strong as before. Uh, if I have this one, I think I have strong argument to go to any rational number. Because uh, what I can Im imagine is the following. Um, I, the claim is for any rational number, it's just a square, so it's m over n. And um, so my state is of this form. We have, this is given. Now this part, I can play with it. I can do whatever I want if it's far away. So I can do it like this. The sum of uh, n minus m states and symmetric states. Something of this kind. Even it doesn't have to be symmetric states. What's important is that every one, it's one over square root of n. In the moment I have one over square root of n, I know that the probability there, it's one over n. Each one of them. So. I know that here it's one over n, here it's one over n, here it's one over n. The, I have n minus m like this. And I can make simultaneously measurement here and here. Here we have uh, n minus m. So what's remain here? It's m minus n because the sum should be one. So from here I, I prove for any rational number. David Deutsch thinks that uh, the step, uh, step from rational to irrational uh, needs a lot of Analysis, I don't know, as a physicist, I don't believe so. Uh, we have continuity, it cannot be different. It's just, you know, we have very close, for any irrational, irrational number, uh, irrational number, we always can find very close number, rational number there, I know, and you will not convince me that uh, the fact that it's rational or irrational, these things behave differently. Uh, mathematicians maybe like these ideas, physicists, don't see much difference. So 
the, what remain, I think it's what was your question, and this may be not so trivial, all what I showed that if I have this uh, states uh, superposition here and here and here, then I have this uh, causality argument. But uh, I might have this kind of state. But I proved for this state. If I look, measure for A, when we have A here and this is far away D and we have this, this coefficient, then I know probability of A is one over three. But if I have a spin, localized, I don't have any locality, nothing. So I cannot, I don't have this argument for, this argument was for special states. But I have formalism of quantum mechanics. Formalism of quantum mechanics, I believe. Formalism of quantum mechanics allows me on a level before collapse to move from this state to this state. I can make a swap operation. And in fact, many uh, in the laboratory people do. They take photons, put uh, excited atoms, or put uh, on le different level of atoms. We can have uh, atoms with three states. It sends different photons different places. There is a connection. Quantum connection between uh, the, these non states in space and states of internal degrees of freedom. So, if we believe quantum mechanics, and this is given, formalism of quantum mechanics is given, the only problematic thing is this collapse, which we don't know exactly what happened. But it cannot happen that when we measure spin, something different will happen than when we measure uh, this uh, special state. There will be inconsistency. So. Essentially, uh, this, I think, complete the proof uh, of the Born rule. If we have, if we use relativity postulate, then any time we have a quantum state which has amplitude uh, alpha, probability to find, uh, to find this quantum state in projection, projective measurement is uh, absolute value alpha squared. Yes. I can see a symmetry argument. I see that this works, but what you are doing is working on inside and presupposing the Hilbert space. Uh, and I never every, mentioned I didn't, which way. <laughs> that superposition, what, what, what no, is the meaning of that? Super, of course, no, this, this is part of no. formalism but of quantum so mechanics. My, my question is, yes. I don't see how do you go from uh, that superposition to the number. How do you connect? Because what? this is essentially the Born rule, right? What? Is how to connect the, the vector in the Hilbert space with the probability that you observe. And how do you go from one place to the other? Again, you agree with me when, when I have symmetric situation? When I have symmetric situation, the probability is 1 over n. You're happy with it. Now, you agree with me is that now, if I take these things and move them, they're far away from here, and I move them fast. Probability cannot change here. So the, now the probability supervene only on wave function because there is nothing else. And here I look on this wave function. I have, I have a, a, the, my question is, is previous. I understand if, if you have the symmetry, it's perfect. My, my question is how do you reach the symmetry? Let us suppose that I have a Hilbert space of three uh, dimensions and you have a superposition of, of, of three cases, but the superposition is, is not one, one third, I mean one uh, uh, square three. It's, I don't know, uh, different, okay. So, so how do you reach symmetry from that case that has only three dimensions, but the three cases are not from the very beginning Symmetric. You have so, to so. split, but how do you split if you have no dimensions? You have no more dimensions in the okay. Hilbert space. So First, the for this, I, for this kind of game, I can bring another system which is irrelevant for me, another spin which I don't care about it, and, uh, make, a, and, and make a measurement which will split. But this is more for many words. I, I, I think. I don't need this for all this thing because I, I proved for one over square root of n, then I proved for uh, m on m over n, so I, I covered the whole story. 
but to, your kind of thing maybe it's simpler. I just split it more into simple equal devices <laughs> using another Hilbert space, another devices. So this is one of the answer. I don't I don't need it, but I think this is, will be fast way to answer uh, answer. If I have, if they are equal, this is two third. Oh, no, no. I say, I so mean, you can split you, more. You uh, suppose that in some place. Splitting and splitting, you will reach uh, symmetry. Yes. yes. Okay, this is the assumption. Yes. This is the sim symmetry assumption that I could understand at the beginning. This is the, the assumption. Not that, yeah. I mean, the assumption no. is not that no, no. The assumption, symmetry, no, no. Symmet symmetry means equiprobability, but no, the no. fact that you always will reach okay. symmetry when you. No. Grow the, the, the assumption is that when I have symmetry, then, then, I, then I can rely, to, rely on this and, and, to, and to use it. Now, then for the case when I had three, oh, sorry. Well, in the case when I have three, I know I can always bring it to symmetric cases, or like one to three. And when I have many, it's not exact, but I can play, and it's very plausible. It will be very strange. Any other theory will be very strange. I don't. The, the assumption maybe sometimes it's problematic. So you, but it's a fine tuning. Uh, so uh, let's come back to this uh, standard formalism and see what why I don't like it. We have this postulate experience supervene on uh, supervene on wave functions. This I like. Um, but the problem, I like it, many, but there are some objections which I think were mentioned in the, uh, here in the workshop too. Uh, some people say how reality can correspond to wave function when it's in three and dimension. And for me, the, what's important, it's three dimension in our space, not three and dimension. So I think this should be made clear. The same, it's the same thing, it's very important in many words, but uh, I will start with standard interpretation. Even uh, I think Tim Mandlin doesn't uh, believe that we have problem even uh, with the collapsed wave function. Even uh, every microscopic object are collapsed. We still think that since uh, wave function defined in a Hilbert space with three n dimension, which cannot correspond to reality. We need something here. And I agree, we need something here. And I believe we have something here. Uh, because Collapsed quantum state, all macroscopic objects sit in one place. This is definition. Like uh, Van Neumann says, we cannot have su macroscopic superposition of macroscopic states. They all collapse to well-defined states. Now, inside, we have atoms. These atoms, of course, entangled. The wave function of atom is really in three n dimension. But these atoms in normal processes remain as atom. They don't play a role. What's play a role? Atom interact as an atom. Or oh, definitely uh, human interact as a human. Cat interact as a cat. And the wave function, the whole wave function, is a product state of, macroscop uh, of wave function of macros macroscopic object. The center of mass or center of particle, you, you can decide how you characterize the position of a macroscopic object. Anyway, all macroscopic objects, they are not entangled. Each one sits in, uh, in well localized in three dimension uh, space. Wave fun this story, collapsed wave function, all objects around us uh, sits in three space. Even I use quantum mechanics. I don't believe in classical mechanics at all. Everything is quantum. But the wave function of macroscopic object is in three-dimensional state. And all this entanglement, which is part of quantum mechanics, it's only inside uh, internal things, which we need it, important. But they don't correspond to our experience. Experience correspond to three-dimensional state. This table is here, and chair is here, and I'm here. And there is a product state of me and the table. There is no entanglement between them. So, uh, and for macroscopic object, entanglement does not exist. So experience macroscopic object, macroscopic objects are in 3D, experience to this product state, have no problem. This problem doesn't exist. We live, believing it's interaction in 3D and everything in three dimension. Okay, this, this problem doesn't exist. This problem does exist. 
collapse. As a physicist, I cannot, there are all these theories, uh, but I don't find any of them as a good candidate to believe that this, this is how the life is, the nature is. I think the inventors of these theories uh, hardly believe that it's how it is. My friend Philip Perl trying very hard, and he really believes that this might be like this. But I think even among uh, collapse uh, theory proponents, he is in a minority. Most of them, okay, we don't know if what it is, but this is kind of a model. So collapse uh, also, <laughs> I found kind of a nice uh, quotation, uh, uh, ugly scar, I think, yeah, beautiful, I agree. Beautiful theory, if it, uh, if it could be removed. Uh, it's not well defined because in all this, uh, there is no exact definition how it happened in uh, GRW, Perl, Diozzi, Penrose. Uh, it introduces randomness. For me, a good scientific theory should be deterministic. Now, quantum mechanics, I believe, made revolution and changed this attitude. Before, people believed so, but now I found, I think, Irman is a, among philosophers will agree that this is kind of, I can uh, rely on him. Irman. Yes? Irman? Yes. Yeah, so determinism is taking to be what uh, might be termed as the, f uh, the feasible methodological imperative. Star, uh, start by assuming that determinism is true. If the candidate uh, law, uh, uh, laws discovered so far are not deterministic, then presume that there are other laws to be discovered. Or the ones so far, so far discovered are only approximation to the correct laws. Only after long and repeated failure, maybe uh, may we entertain the hypothesis that the failure of, to find deterministic laws does not represent a lack of imagination or diligence on our part, but reflects the fact that nature is non-deterministic. So I think we didn't, again, we have a good candidate which is deterministic. I see no reason whatsoever. I don't know if I can make proper uh, kind of promotion. I have a paper, Quantum Mechanics and Determinism, in a new, new journal of Chapman University, which is quantum studies, also except philosophical papers on quantum studies. So uh, first, you're welcome to read uh, my paper, and you, uh, if you find it reasonable, maybe submit uh, your papers there. Um, action at a distance. Uh, it was mentioned here that some people believe that there is no action at a distance in collapse. But again, maybe because you don't take uh, what I took, wave function is my ontology. So, if at least when I take the wave function as ontology, there is an action at a distance. No. Let, let me. <laughs> so let's, we have a particle in the superposition A and B. We have a description like this, or maybe Fock representation shows even more kind of a robust way where, what, where, what is. Uh, we have superposition of particle in A and not in B, and particle in B and not in A, or we have, uh, but really, if I ask what is in B? Uh, the complete story, it's a wave function, but complete story in B, it's a density matrix. This is a complete story in B. This is what we have in B. This is what, um, this is what ontology of the wave function tell us. In B, there is no pure state, there is a density matrix. This is Maximal complete information of what is in B. And before the measurement, if we don't do anything, this is what it is there. This is a reality. Now I come to A, which may be very far away, maybe in Tel Aviv, and uh, make a measurement if my particle in A or not. Let's say I found that it's not. Never mind what I found, I change the situation in B. Before we have this density matrix, uh, what it was before, half, half, and now we have this density matrix with one in one of the places, one, uh, one on the diagonal. It's immediate change. So how you can say it's not action at a distance? We're talking with respect to materials. Great. But, but just remember what I, it does kick back to what I said yesterday. We'll talk later. Okay. Uh, okay, so for me, the, Ontology, what is, is just all its psi, no collapse. So 
So the picture as before, but before we just single out one of them, maybe there is a thing, we see only one of them. But there are all words, this is kind of a pic picture of all words and how thick they are, for me it's important, how, how, much, how much they exist. For me, different words exist with different measures. And um, many word interpretation is first, that, that this string revolution of this uh, wave function, and uh, we have, but this is not enough because we need connection to our experience. I think I have this uh, parasitic way to make connection to experiment. Uh, what I can say, uh, first, there are multiple words similar to the one we experience. Similar to the one we experience, important. Before sim the, the words we experience correspond to these collapses, which uh, majority accepts that it's okay. They know how to do, what, what does it mean to have collapse? They know how to write the collapsed wave function. So if people know, people who are not wor working on foundations, people who are just using quantum mechanics. They say they know what happened when the measurement happened. The wave function collapses to a particular wave function. Now, I will use this as a definition. In many words, there are these words. They're not the stories, they're not, there's no real words. This is our story, so it's my decision how I put these stories, how we decompose the words. Decompose according to the recipe of standard uh, physis uh, of physicists who just use quantum mechanics and believe in collapse. He believes it, co it co will collapse to a particular waves, that all microscopic objects are well localized. So we will use it. This is decomposition when each one of them is like one possible collapsed word. If I don't want to be parasitic and I want to work a little more hard, I just define it. Quantum states of all microscopic objects are localized wave packets. This is property of uh, the wave function of a word. Because there is a big wave function which is entangled and whatever, I have to decompose it to, this, uh, to many corresponding to word. My principle, quantum states of all microscopic objects are localized wave packets. And I believe what uh, this collapse uh, people do, exactly the same. Now, here, uh, Tappanen put this uh, coin, this term, so I not modestly use it. <laughs> uh, born Weidman rule, and I believe that, I don't know that any, anyone uh, proposed uh, this kind of idea before, so I think I do have a right to do this. Uh, the probability of self-location of an observer in particular world is proportional to its measure of existence. Measure of existence in this just this coefficient. Uh, philosophers frequently don't like this idea, but I think it's very much, uh, I, I believe that this is what it is. There are these words and other words, they're all real, but some exist more than others. And there are all kind of, I will not talk here, maybe I don't believe I will uh, end in time because the words which uh, exist more have more power to interfere. But anyway, what we need here is just this definition. Take uh, the wave function of word, make scalar product with the wave function of the universe, and this tell us the measure of existence, how this word, how much this word exists. Five minutes, uh, okay, okay. Okay, okay, so I'll, I'll try to, uh, okay. So, um, in principle, the proof is the same proof, but there is a problem before the proof. I believe that in many words, there is a problem uh, kind of to use a probability because the word probability is misleading. I believe there is no probability in many words. It's only illusion. There is kind of trick which I will discuss, how we can talk, but there is no. And let me briefly talk about it. In many words, there is no meaning for probability. There is no randomness and there is no ignorance. Of course, there is no chance, clear. And there is no ignorance. Because, um, let's say, we consider this experiment and uh, probability of something to happen, A and B, but both happened. And um, in principle, we can have the whole information and it will not help us. It's not that it's missing when I throw the coin, I don't know exactly the angle or velocity. Here, that will not help me. If I make this experiment, I, I, I know 
the whole initial condition I still doesn't help me. There is no, uh, now I can add an observer and observer for me is also quantum, so we'll get this. And uh, my observer is moved to the right or to the left, depending on the outcome. But it doesn't help me. In collapse, I understand. There is some random process, and so I can say it's B or A. There is a meaning. In Bohmian mechanics, there is also meaning, because it's deterministic. But still, but there is ignorance. By definition, we don't know Bohmian position. So here, if uh, the Bohmian position uh, was in a, this 10% of the low part of the wave function, then it go to B. But if it will be in the 90%, it will go to A. So it's ignorance. Where was the Bohmian position of this particle? In many words, probability of what? We don't have anything like this. We don't have ignorance of anything. There is no probability. So I can put this kind of postulate here, just use the postulate. So I will just define, it. I uh, have this weights of words, and I will care about words which are big one more than words which are small one. Now, if uh, I think w what might help me, if I can connect still to kind of probability. And the way to connect is, in fact, this work from long time ago. This was, in fact, like nine years before the uh, time it was published. It broke the record of a uh, number of uh, journals it was re uh, rejected. <laughs> uh, uh, I think most of philosophy journals are, uh, have the honor for this. And uh, so the, and, um, the idea is that I can introduce the ignorance probability inside the many words. Even it's deterministic and even uh, everything is supposed to be known. So how it goes? Uh, I do the same experiment. I have a particle go to a beam splitter. It has uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.1 going here and here. And um, uh, I go to sleep before the experiment. I, I prepare everything. I talk to my friends. Please, if it's A, move me to room A. If it's uh, B, move me to room B. So uh, then this is what's uh, happening. Uh, after uh, I awake, uh, rooms are more or less identical or identical. Somebody come to me and ask, what is the probability that you are in uh, room A? Now, here it's uh, legitimate. I either in room A or not in room A. There is a meaning for this. I, I, there is a meaning for probability. Now, only for me there is meaning for probability because everyone, uh, everyone else knows there is one guy in A, one guy in B. I don't know. What, um, of course, I will say 0 0.9 equal to quantum mechanics. In B, I will also give the same number, 0 0.9. So since both give uh, the same number, I can kind of associate it with the probability before the experiment, although it's not, it's probability of a descendants. Descendants have a re, uh, real probability. They, they really don't know, and it's interesting situation, identity. They, only I don't know my identity. I might know the whole wave function of the universe. God can tell me both the one sleeping in A and one sleeping in B. The whole wave function of the universe, it will not help. They still will have the concept of probability because they don't know their identity. Self-location. There is a word A, word B, and I don't know, even I know exactly there is A, there is B, there is everything. I don't know in which word am I. And only I have this probability concept, no one else. God doesn't have it because God can define, there is, for him it's one, the probability of the A, uh, me, live in A, uh, a uh, is, uh, in, if it, the one in A is an A, the one in B is an B. He doesn't have these numbers, the quantum numbers. Only I can define them, because I only, have, only I have this concept of probability. So, uh, and in this way, I kind of connect it. So this is kind of connection to probability, uh, because, um, OK, um, since all descendants uh, yield the same answers, we can connect it to the one before the experiment. 
because I know that all my descendants uh, will have this concept. And uh, probability of self-location uh, uh, proportional to the alpha square. This is uh, essentially the way to introduce probability. Now let's briefly compute, uh, uh, come back to the proof. Uh, only this part is important. Um, let's look on this. Now I don't believe in collapse. So I have this experiment. They, there, is, um, there are signs A, B, B, and C. In particular times, they all make experiment. Probability by symmetry doesn't work. Why? Because there is no probability. There is no meaning. In this experiment, there is no meaning. Still, there is kind of a meaning. If we will say that they made many times this kind of experiment and they have memories, I can say now is I'm living in particular world. My probability concept, I say, I don't know all outcomes of all experiments. I know they exist in my world. If I go to a laboratory or I go to some uh, scientific journal to see what the outcome up and down, there are some numbers. Now, my postulate tells me these numbers should correspond to Born rule. Because the measure of my world, it's the self-location. and I'm sure that there are words in which they don't. But I have this probability. Probability to self-location in the world corresponding to Born rule are proportional to, this, uh, um, to, the, uh, to, to the amplitude. Now, it, yes, I'm, if I will do this, then I have probability for future. I will change the experiment. Uh, I will put this uh, the same. Uh, in somebody uh, will automatically will look if the particle is there or not. If it's a particle there, it will move to one room. And if it's not there, it will move to another room. And then I awake. And then I uh, want to say, what is the probability? Now, everything is symmetric. And I can use this argument. And I also get, get the same story about one, of us, one third to find a particle in A. But I need this trick if I want the concept of probability. So well, let me then stop maybe now. Uh, oh, just well, oh, one important thing. I don't need this motion, relativistic thing. I know that quantum mechanics does it. Quantum mechanics cannot send signals. All what I need to know is that everything which is here should tell everything which is happening here. Therefore. Uh, this, I know that in symmetric case, it's 1 over 3. So in any other case, it should be also 1 over 3 because it cannot depend on, but, uh, on anything else by the local description here. And the local description here is just this. So in many words, it's a more like a proof than in others because I don't need a relativistic uh, uh, principle. It's only built in, in the fact that the physics uh, tell, tell me this. The equation, the relativistic uh, the equations uh, have it. I, instead, I need this local supervenience. I need the observer is local sitting here. It's not something far away. Uh, OK, this is just repeating my picture. Thank you. Thanks. Can you, um, can you say a bit more about the um, amplitude representing the degree of reality of worlds and, and the ontology of worlds? So do you think, for example, that there's always a definite fact of the matter about how many worlds there are? And do you think that um, when we make a measurement, there's exactly one world that corresponds to each possible outcome. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm assuming that you do. I just want to check that I've got that right. Um, maybe if I, I don't believe there will be time or maybe I'll show you later. I have about this measure of existence. I have a few more slides later, somewhat are related, but maybe I'll answer your second question. Maybe there will be time or I believe in physics. Physics is a wave function. Word is my concept. It's not well-defined concept. Of course, in this question, in this experiment, it was well-defined. I is a fine particle or not fine particle. So uh, the word with finding and without finding. 
in real life, there will be another world in which uh, my uh, device explodes, or my device didn't show anything, malfunction, some other things. On some other, I can decide if it's, I don't see well, maybe I just saw it's up, but it's down. There are all kind of, it's a vague concept. The number of words, it's not well defined. It's what's how you, we have to, in, in this clean situation, I can count them. But in principle, in real life, it's uh, just a story. Um, so this is the number of words, it's not well defined, it's, it's our concept. This is answer to the second one about the, the measure of existence. I don't know. I don't um, thank you. I, I like this argument. I mean, as you mentioned, it's similar to other things in the literature, but I like using the spatial, spatial symmetry. That's, that's, a, that's a nice um, feature of that argument. Um, I just want to go back to this issue of collapse and action at a distance. Um, so, I mean, here's the way I think you should think about it. So you've got Alice and Bob, and Bob's got his qubit here, and you say, well, what is it over here? And you're right, it's the reduced um, state. But you know, I can take different hypersurfaces going through that, you know, you know um, um, that here and now for Bob, and you, and if there's collapse in between them, I'll get different redu reduced states for, um, you know, f for 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 Bob's qubit, right? And so you say, well, how do I think about this? And here's the way I think we should think about it. For each one of those hypersurfaces, the state on that hypersurfaces gives probabilities for events to its future conditional on events to the past. And that way of thinking about it, okay, you know, you can say perfectly well, fine, conditional on Alice getting this result, this is the reduced state. And it's clear if I put it that way that that's not a local fact about Bob's qubit because it's an implicit reference to something at space like si distance. So I say, okay, what is, what, what's really there? You know, what's really there, the intrinsic state of Bob's qubit? Um, I would say there you have to see it's the state on the past light cone. Right. So what's really there, the, 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 um, you know, if, if you're asking the question what's really there, you look at the state on the past light cone if I understand, you want to play uh, where exactly collapse happened. Just, and in my picture, I had this collapse uh, kind of standard idea. Collapse happened at t equals zero. But this is not what's important. Yeah. So, may, 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 may just, may, may, no, no, yeah. may, may, what? Yeah, so the collapse event, no, no. Just, just. Yeah. There are two situations. Right. And never mind, you can put it on a uh, light cone backward, forward, decide how you do it. There are two situations. One situation, we have Alice and Bob far away, and uh, Bob uh, and Alice doesn't do anything, never. Right. And there is another situation, Alice measures. Clearly, there is a difference in Bob. Put, put your uh, special relativity or not special, whatever relativity, foliation, when you want. How you'll put it always. If there is a measurement here, this remains half, half, forever. If there is a measurement here, this will change one or zero. When it changes its details, you, you have, you, I, I, in my talk it was just t equals zero. So then it, if you decide it's changed on backward cone, so it will change some other time. This, this is, but the fact there is a difference, measurement or not measurement, here. And this difference happened exactly when you make measurement. And Ben plus plus your decision, the, the decision about foliation on which light cone, whatever. So this action changes something there. But not at a distance. What's not at a distance? Like in the light, what? Okay, let, let, me, let me just say, 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 say this again. So I'm looking at this way. If I want to ask about what's really there for Bob's. Um, what, you know, what, 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 what's really there for Bob's um, for, uh, um, cu qubit, um, the state that I need to look at is the state on the past light cone. And for that state, it doesn't become the collapsed state until Alice's measurement is in the past. So it's not acting at a distance. 
it, it, it's ordinary action of past to future. Uh, all this standard, uh, again. So what you suggest, uh, you have the same collapse, you have Helvin Krauss collapse, and say that this is relativistic. Yes, Helvin Krauss collapse relativistic, it has so many other problems, but it doesn't, uh, in all the standard literature, well, what, what, let's, we, well, we can discuss, we can discuss this of, later, just, yeah. just to, to continue. What I meant, the standard idea that uh, collapse happened simultaneously at t equals zero. Here you agree that there is a change there? Instead of trying to fit this in, into something that you're already familiar with in the literature and already know how to refute, I suggest you listen to what I say. Okay. Uh, we, we have time for one short uh, uh, last question. So two. Uh, I, I liked your idea of uh, symmetry. Reminded me of a way in which uh, probability was understood starting from uh, the principle of uh, equal chances. No, that, that's the idea. It's an old and nice idea. Uh, concerning probability, I, I think that I, uh, not just in many words, but also in more mechanics, probability doesn't play any serious role. I mean, ignorance, who cares about ignorance? The world doesn't care about in our ignorance. In Bohmian mechanics, what is relevant are statistical patterns. What you make in an experiment is an ensemble of uh, uh, real, concrete, Stan Gerlach, mm, in, maybe many of them at the same time or at different times. So what is relevant are, are typical patterns. And uh, our proof of Born's rules connect directly to patterns, and our proof was related to Everett. I mean, what, what, what's bad about original Everett proof? Original Everett proof is the same that we use in Bohmian mechanics. Namely, there is a bridge not between uh, uh, the theory and probability, meaning a certain number, but there is a bridge between the theory and a statistical pattern in the world. So that was the essence of, of Everett proof. And I wonder why you all people, also other people in Oxford, uh, find new ways. I mean, I, I don't see anything wrong in Everett. Right. I, I read Everett and I was not convinced. And about Bohm, there is no, pro, there is no problem with defining probability. But with probability in Bohm, for example, Aronoff thinks it's the main uh, disadvantage of Bohmian position. They put by hand. Uh, the psi square in your in your initial uh, Bohmian position. No, no. This seems to, and I uh, agree, it's a minus. No, yeah, no, 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 you, no, This is postulate. I don't believe. I think you're not with Valentini saying that you don't no, need no, it. No, you no. do in, need it. In, in so. Bohm, it's like in Everett. You take the psi square of a universe as a measure of typicality. And then you prove exactly, I'm using the same word of Everett. And then you prove that in a subsystem, you have a statistical pattern actually in the world, which is uh, uh, close to the psi square of a small system. So it's exactly like in Everett. So you, we have to discuss it later. I'm not. Okay. okay, we can go for 